And hello, everybody. I am Electric. Here with me is Tama, and we're about to watch Blue Esports Paracusia face up against D Whatever in 16 star, three races in our 16 star league. Tama, how are you doing today? Or Tama, my bad. Uh, I was up all night, and I took a 20 minute nap before this. So I'm running on that 20 minute nap right now. <laughs> Sounds like peak commentary performance, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, what are you thinking about this race? Because Para just got out of kind of a weird race yesterday with Ouija with a forfeit result. And I mean, it's pretty unlikely D's going to do something like that. So well, what are you looking forward to in this race? I think these runners are actually really similar in the way that they're both. Their times in 16 are both not very optimized, but their movement is way better than their actual PB and their strats are too. So you think that's kind of like a, they just haven't put the time in to grind for that better PB yet, but obviously yeah. the strat improvement is there. I, I can definitely agree with that. And I mean, both of these guys at a super high level, no matter what category they try to compete in, but I mean, it's with a category as short as 16 star, it's, it's definitely kind of, I guess, all about who's gotten re-consistent at that stuff more than the other. Yeah, for sure. It's also like way more grindy and you're less likely to continue runs with any big mistake. Oh, no doubt. I mean, within what, like a three minute period, you're having to deal with Dark World and then go into uh, Womps. Like by yeah. the time you're eight minutes into the run, you've done basically all the hard tricks <laughs> in the Mario book. And that's yeah. not even counting the basement or upstairs. I, do they end up having to go for double p in in uh, SSL? I don't believe they do. No, not in 16. And both getting Lacity Skip. Let's see how the first hard trick comes around and goes. Yes. We saw Paracusia have a bit of trouble with uh, LBLJ yesterday, so let's see how it shakes out today for him. Yeah. Instant long jump. Goes right past the door, and he's looking clean. Oh, yep. but D doesn't go through. Oh, D just right. barely getting blocked by that staircase. And Yeah, he didn't have enough speed. I mean, with how precise that trick is, the time loss from failing it is brutal. And I mean, in a category like 16 star, going in BOB first is just not an option. Yeah, and it's really funny because even though he failed that first one, he's still saving time route wise. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a 30 second time to save a Judas route. Both of them making quick work of Dark World. Looks like Para playing it a little bit safe with that cheese block strat. He actually does that because it's slightly faster. And D going through the elevator cycle. I wonder what D's got cooking up his sleeve. I actually didn't like realize the really cheese block good. was faster. I, I thought it was a safety strat some people went for, but... I'm pretty sure D just hit Chia cycle in a race, which is crazy. Wow. I, I think you're right, man. Yeah. <laughs> he he knows he lost some time, and so what does he do? He just goes for fucking Zaya cycle. Oh, and Sorry, uh, family-friendly <laughs> Zaya Cycle. <laughs> but Para likes to do Poverty Shake because it takes a little bit more time over doing Normal Shake. Yeah, which, I mean, I can respect that. Definitely don't blame him. Yeah. Oh, D. D's barely edging that door right there. A frame later and he might have missed yep and he's definitely like that Zaya cycle i'm thinking really tighten up that lead or yeah, it, it's pretty sad that he bonked right at the end now yeah would have been just a, a fire dark world so now we see para going into womps and this is going to give him a pretty decent chance to really solidify that lead or just ruin it all together kind of depends on how these first two major tricks go and para is the kind of guy who would like to go for texture setup when he's feeling good about his gameplay. And he's starting with Canlis, so I would like to believe he's hearing that. No, he's going to do full setup. He's going to take him consistent. Must have put some hours back in with the uh, sock folder setup, because uh, I believe a couple of days ago he was in a race where he failed the setup and uh, instantly passed texture setup. And so he was trying to use texture first uh, in his race yesterday, but just had yeah. kind of bad luck with either method. And be doing the same thing, just sticking with stride and true, honestly. You don't want to lose a bunch of time in a category like this to texture setup. They're having a little trouble with his quick turn, but he does get in on his first attempt. I 
And so let's see what they've got going through Owlis here. D whatever. Nice Owlis landing right on top of that fencing. Yeah. Clipping the little fence is always a little scary, but you can make it in. Yeah, it's even though Owlis is a hard trick, that fence, and really any fence in the game is surprisingly forgiving with letting you clip through it. Yeah. At least and when compared fences. to modern fences. Yeah, and some fences don't really let you clip on top of them, and you go right through them. Especially when you want to clip them. <laughs> so, Pear did go for full setup, but I know for a fact he will not do a baby plus. You think he's pulling out the big guns? I, yeah. I, I think there's a little bit of bias. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure D's gonna do the same. Both runners are very adamant about what Pelin lists they do in runs. Yeah, for those that do not know my co-com here, Tom uh, came up with a method for Pless that makes it faster, but also a lot more difficult. Affectionately named the Tama Pless. Looks like Para, ooh, having a bit of an issue going up the pyramid, but. Yeah, he had a slightly wrong angle, so he ended up on the other side. And let's see what D whatever does. Same thing. <laughs> This time, he has a better angle than what Para had, so he had a little bit easier time getting in. I bet you must be feeling proud right now. <laughs> yeah. Just beautiful plus from both of these guys. Do whatever I do whatever is just shaving time off Para's lead right now. It's yeah. Para built up a substantial lead with that LBLJ fail from D, but then D's just been making up time everywhere. And Para doing left side, as always. Really consistent at that, but doesn't get the star. That's... That's an unfortunate uh, ground. Yeah. <laughs> Losing some of the time that he saved over D with that strat. Let's see how, yep, D going right into that star, making it look easy. And let's see, ideal SSL, seeing them grab this star at the end. Definitely yeah. don't want to have to see someone go for this star somewhere in the middle and then have to deal with plus as one of their closers or something like that. Yeah, for 70, it's pretty much the same. You don't have any real backups. So it's always really sad when you don't get the bomb grab on your first attempt. Or yeah, and especially uh, after your second attempt, the bo the uh, Talon backup isn't the best, and then obviously having no backup is just horrendous, having to just respawn the bomb on. And speaking but of a start that's horrendous when you fail, Para did not fail side hop right there. I was going to say, that was yeah. that was beautiful movement there. That's a start at when you feel you you pretty much have nowhere else to go for the most part. And it's really awkward to set up the triple jump again. Oh, yeah. It just the platform just happens to be in the right position that the angles you're using getting over to it in the first place set you up pretty nicely for that triple jump. But yeah. like you said, second attempt, it's just not worthwhile. And Para, we see not a huge fan of the lava boosting, but that's okay, because yeah. his elevator strats are looking in good form. D also with that triple jump wall kick. Very nice. And I think D's going to do elevator tour, too. Would make sense. had a little I slip mean... up. He went a little too early on his kick, so the elevator didn't actually activate. Oh, didn't actually notice that. Yeah, that's I, a you don't... weird mistake to make. You don't need the elevator to move that far, do you? Uh, You do need it to move, though. Mm -hmm. Or you won't have enough distance. Compare, they're having some issues with the big bully. Yeah. Fortunately, not having to do triples in 16. Sometimes the big bully is all we need. Yep. I mean, even then, though, he can. Even though you just have one to deal with, he, he's big, he can be a big pain. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I really wanted to say that randomly so that you wouldn't know. I do have Twitch. <laughs> yeah, I, I have chat pulled up, but man, I, I wish that would have worked too. <laughs> the lower voices, Tom, excuse me, my masculinity is offended by you saying I have a higher pitched voice. <laughs> Everyone says terrible. I have like a really deep voice. I. It's a decent timber. It doesn't sound like you've been smoking like cartons through a chimney. But it, it, it's a nice bassoon tone, I'd say. Thank you. 
commentators letting the racers just go through HMC while complimenting voices. Yeah. What, what has GSA turned into? They're starting with Rolling Rocks, but D's gonna get the hardest star in HMC out of the way. Very nice, that triple box jump. Mm. When it's executed like what D just did here, it's just a beautiful star, especially that dive on yeah. the end. And it's really crazy because like, it's a star that you even notice you lose time on, and it's so hard to execute. Right, it, it's a, it's like a wing cap in a way, because wing cap you can lose so much time without really making any noticeable mistakes until you actually yeah. go back and compare to an optimal clean run. Now it's Paris' turn. Okay, he's got he, that jump. Uh, dives a little early, but it's fine. Doesn't really lose time. How precise is the dive to grab the star immediately rather than hitting the ground first? Uh, you don't even have to dive into the star. You can land right on it. Really? Did not know that the momentum yeah. was there for that. I've always seen the dives. I think the only one who doesn't dive into the star is Jaws. Oh, Pear doesn't get his ground bound. And D's not that far behind. He's really, really just not behind Para. Yeah, the they, I mean, they're they're both in heavy go mode. Like, one failed Mips grab, Mips clip. I mean, any anything could make the difference right now. Anything. Yeah. Oh, punch grab. Para is playing it safe all run, then pulls out a punch grab. But D's not going to go for that. He's not a 16 runner at all. I know Para does some races with 16 every now and then. So he's more accustomed to stuff like that. Now, uh, while they're doing these clips, we got Zelda's daddy in the chat with optimal theories saying that uh, Tama has a, quote, Vin Diesel voice. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and he has something that he wants you to say. Do you see it there? Uh, I don't know if I should say that. <laughs> I, I think he'd appreciate it. I, I think our <laughs> audience would enjoy it. You almost had me. You never had me. You never had your car. <laughs> and let's see That's these fun. guys. Para with the rear sub. Yeah, Both of them gonna fall behind him. Front yeah. sub is something that it's really hard to execute, and you fail it once you're not saving anything at all. Oh yeah, no, especially on N64, both these guys being on console, I, I, I'm i not surprised. Even as close as this race is, I'm not surprised they're trying to pull out, they wouldn't be trying to pull out those stops. Well, let's see what they go for in Fire Sea. Pole Pair, glitch. Yeah, he's lining it up, and oh, oh he doesn't a bonk get it. instead. That's pretty rough. I wasn't paying that close attention to his movement. It could have been his single jump frame, but D gets pole glitch. That's going to be a massive time save. Yep, with that, they're like neck and neck. Oh, man. Yeah. Actually, D's in the lead because Pear's going to miss the cycle because he bombed. Yep, exactly. Yeah, way too low on those platforms. I was thinking he'd just barely nudge it in there, but D whatever now with a commanding lead due to that cycle difference. And yeah. Just goes to show with a category as short as 16 star, there is a lot that can change the tide of a race. Easy. And uh, we received word from the chat. It looks like Lunar's claiming that Para was on PB pace. Don't know if that was before the um, early pull glitch issue, but. If Para is on PB pace, that would mean, probably mean that um, D is on PB pace too. It would make sense. And I mean, thinking back, D hasn't made any super major mistakes. Even the LBLG fail, LBLJ fail, failed in like, I think maybe 10 seconds, if that. It, it wasn't much. Yeah. <laughs> it really sucks. He could have made the cycle if he didn't balk. Sometimes if you don't have, I think it's, um, if you don't have enough speed, it causes you to balk. I think that's what caused you to balk right there. Yeah, speed is that, yeah, speed is really important both for just like what happens in the game obviously but also the the movements as far as whether you kick or dive and it just so much in this game plays into momentum that even though like obviously you're controlling mario you, you don't have direct control over what the exact speed value is at any given moment yeah and then it can just cause some really weird stuff to happen and the, oh no the oj's wilco's okay. in the building at least everything 
and D whatever's through. Okay, let's see how Para. If he gets this one, he's definitely still a good contender, and he's through as well. Okay, so it's coming down to bits. May even come down to throws themselves. We'll see yeah. what strats these guys go for. Instant clip from D. Oh, he. Oh, right there. You're supposed to let go of the BLJ and just hold slightly down on your controller and slide up the stairs. But D just held neutral. Very, very odd. Yeah. Must have been yeah, something like close unintentional. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so. And, and cannot get into that hole for whatever reason. D backing out of the triple jump. Doesn't go for a fast one because he noticed his angle wasn't, well, it wasn't good enough. Yeah, and I mean, at this point, that would have lost in the race had he chosen to go for it. So yeah. smart move playing it safe like that. Bear's pretty consistent at his, though. He does this weird camera that I don't see anyone else do. But moving right for D, he gets it. That's going to be tough to contend with for Para as he makes his way up. Yeah, I mean, unless he gets Goomba trolled, and that Goomba's in a good position. Yeah, uh, it's coming down to throws if it comes down to anything. If D can land three consistent, he's good. He's done. Yeah. Para making it up with the angled moving left. Benny's intended method. Oh, pair box and he's all the way down the stairs. The level five box and D misses a throw. Yup, it's coming down to throws. If if D gets it together and manages to pull these next three off perfect, then he's he's got the win. But if he misses one more, he's putting the ball right in Paris court. For this sure. is, I mean, this is only round one, so this is already pretty exciting to see them this close. Oh, I, I thought that wasn't gonna make it. The, the, it looked like the distance was the same on both screens. Yeah, Paris a... didn't make it, and D's did. D's barely hit. <laughs> it's funny how he sits in my account like that. You couldn't even tell if it hit or not. You just have to believe. And Perry and, missed oh, another one. You just cannot clutch it out. And... Is that, that a PB for D? <laughs> it looks like it is. Looks like D's PB going into this was 16-20. And so if that's the case, this is a PB for it. Wow. And even though it was a fire run, it was nowhere near perfect. There's still a lot of things that he could improve, too. That's really awesome. Yeah, D confirming in the group that he PB'd. First RTA PB in almost two years. That was a four-year-old 16-star PB. <laughs> D starting to, to match off really hot. Yeah, let's give it up for D whatever, both for winning this race and for that PB. And we've got two races left. If if he manages to get a second PB in these next two races, I don't know what I'm going to do, but it's going to be pretty <laughs> catastrophic. Like I said, when I started, when the race started, D and Para just, their PBs aren't, they aren't, I can't think of the word. Accurate. They, they, they don't reflect the way <laughs> yeah, that they, they play. And I mean, Order when you think tracks. of how optimized the record is, them being about a minute off of PB, like it, it, it's hard to actually improve that despite your skill improving. Yeah. So both of them with the resets getting ready for round numero two. <laughs> and now for those who uh, maybe kind of uh, haven't been filled in on the league dynamic, even if D takes this race, the third race will still be raced. Uh, the way that the standings will be decided at the end of the league matches are based on a point system rather than a win-loss ratio. So for instance, if D whatever loses that third round, Para is in a better standing position than if he loses that third round. So it could either be a 2-1 loss for Paracusia or a 3-0 loss for Paracusia, the latter actually being worse. Yeah. So uh, with that, uh, when we have the in-person finals at Pace, shout out, um, we, it'll be a much more accurate, uh, more fair way of deciding who gets to go. Oh. Which applies to every category that isn't 16 star. I've been filled in from the pack. Commentators trying to say smart things and inform people and just backfires. GSA doesn't like 16 enough. And it, it's always been a shame. I, I know 16 isn't the greatest beginner category just because of all the insane strats, but it's been one of my personal favorites because you yeah. get to see the fastest stars in the game and you just get to see how broken this game is. Yeah, it's pretty easy to pick up at the start. 
but it's hard to improve in it, and that's the problem with the category for beginners. D having a little bit more trouble with LBLJ. Let's see if he at least clips in his first eye. But he <laughs> didn't even get his BLJs yet. He was still doing air BLJs. Man, rough start from D whatever. And meanwhile, Para, I, I don't know about you, but as a child, it was always my dream to actually get over to that Bowser painting <laughs> there. So, you know, Para fulfilling those childhood dreams at the expense <laughs> of three to four seconds. Yeah. And oh, he hasn't got a speed cake. I was about to say, Para's opening up with the box movement. Went in for a shake last race, but the box moving in this one, that would have been crazy. Okay, now let's see how both these guys pair with that nice looking like a shake cycle. Let's see what D whatever decides to go for. She again. Oh, he's gonna oh. bonk. <laughs> that that first dive there, I, I feel like that's probably the most difficult part of Saya Cycle, if, if not one of the most. Sometimes you can have enough room to get the jump dive out, but you'll still bonk because you're too close. That's definitely one that is a lot closer to like a, a two, three frame window, I'm sure. Yeah. And luckily for D, he didn't die, dang it. He got knocked the other way. Right. That's that's all you can hope for when you're failing that. Any sort of death in Dark World is the, the worst case scenario, no matter where it is, honestly. Yeah. So Pair again gonna start with a pretty big lead. Yeah, Bowser fight the head, but obviously if last race is any indication, you know, may not be the end of the game. For sure. He <laughs> getting an optimal throw. And so now Pair is gonna be moving into Womps for his next phase of the Star Gauntlet. I think really when you're trying to describe the difficulty of this intro, the best thing that you can say is just LBLJ, Dark World, Womps, Peelis, <laughs> all within six minutes. Go. Have fun. I'm sure it'll be fun. And Pear is about halfway through that right now. So yeah. Let's see. Oh, opting for texture this time. And it's good. All yeah, right. First race is a warm up for Pear, apparently. He held back, see what time he could get. And now he's coming out in full force. You know, and we'll see how his Aulus ends up going. And I kind of like Pear's approach to racing. How do you mean? How he held back on strats to see what time he could get in his first race. Definitely. I, I can definitely agree with that. I mean, it's it's one thing to lose your first race just because you were trying to play with insane strats and failed them all. It's another thing to do what Pear has done and say, okay, I tried safety, it didn't work out. We need to be a little bit more risky. It, it's a much more informed way of playing, I, I think. Yeah, he's like, it looks like DA is playing good enough to at least be on 15 pace going upstairs. Right, if those LBLJs weren't such an issue, he easily would be on 15 pace. Yeah. Even with that, as I cycle mistake. Now, Pear gonna be making his way to SSL. Let's see if he decides to rock those Tama Pluses again. Thinking he will. Yeah, I have no doubt in my mind that uh, Pear's not gonna back out on it. <laughs> so, kind of, uh,. Walk me through a little bit. What makes the Tama version of the Plus so much harder than the original setup? With the original setup, you have a lot of leniency as far as you can actually jump. You can angle yourself a lot better. But with Tama Plus, you have to be on a certain side of the hill in order to get the slide. And there's so many different things that can go wrong. You can end up on your belly, you can drop the bomb, you can get a really bad angle. There's just so much that can go wrong. But with the other place, you can fix all of that really easily. So it's really the the advantage, or, or the disadvantage rather, is just the the leniency, especially at the beginning. Yeah. And Ooh, and Para getting a bonk off of the fly guy there. Wow, that's nasty. Yeah, that fly guy is tired of dying. He's had enough of it. Yeah, he he saw Para's uh, ratio of consistency with that left side strat and just said, "Nah, -uh, not today." <laughs> Torchwood 
a massive raid. Thank you for the raid. Beautiful raid from Torch. Yeah. Hope some uh, good runs came of that stream. And oh, the fly guy <laughs> not cooperating with D whatever either. So we see Perry, that's how the left side should look there. Yeah. D's gonna opt to go over to this pillar and wait. Not that long we'll wait. Do you think he was just scared of missing Talon on his uh, second attempt? Because I, I feel like it would have been better to back up with the top of the pyramid star. Probably. Either that or he just wasn't... He just wasn't comfortable doing anything else. Uh, that's certainly fair. And I mean, it could be considered, too, in a racing situation like this, your brain could just completely pass over the possibility. Oh, Meanwhile, yeah. Para passing over the wall kick possibility. Yeah. That's... That's bad. Didn't have the right angle, and this time he didn't have enough height. Looks like he's going to go for it again. Yep. And this is what I was talking about earlier, man. Oh, this finally star. getting it that time, man. This is a star where there's no real backups besides just trying it again. And I mean, if, if you want to explain to someone easily the level of optimization of this game, just tell them wall kicking technically will give you like just enough room to ledge grab on top yeah. of the wall you kicked off of. Good luck actually doing it. And these guys are expected to just do it reliably on command. And quickly. Just, yeah, it's, it, it's just insane. So many little quirks of the game engine. And oh, Para pulling out the lava boost this time and yeah. making it very nice. This is kind of what I expected from Para when I saw his dark roll. Yeah, is that enough for the baby strats? And especially after all those issues with the log rolling star, which D whatever, obviously not having any of those issues. Yeah. If he doesn't know about the lead he already had, he, he definitely is thinking right now, I need to do whatever I can to make my lead better or at least get a lead. Ground pound. Oh, Pear is just not backing out of anything right now. Looks like D's going for boost, too. He's going to match Para, and he gets it. Very nice. Camera looking a little bit iffy for a moment. There may have just been the uh, the restream yeah. that we're watching, but... I think that's the way he likes to do it. And Para, of course, finishing out with those reds. What do you think pros and cons of doing reds at the start or at the end of Triple L? Uh, doing it at the start... It's kind of just, uh, I don't like the way the camera acts with the text box. And doing that at the end is, I like doing a simple star at the end. Give me a little break before HMC. Yeah, and That's I mean, I feel about it. Triple L is nowhere near as intimidating as two of the other stages in the run, SSL or Womps. But at the same time, I, I mean, with the intensity of stuff like log rolling and um, lava boost, I, I could definitely understand putting it at the middle just to, or putting it at the start rather, just to have that little bit of reprieve. Because aside from the strat that we see Para just nailing right here in HMC, there's not a whole lot that really causes a lot of issues. Yeah, he did a really nice backup. Usually when you fail it that first time, it's really hard to get the triple jump off the box because of your camera. And that's, I think, something that a lot of people, when I started watching runs, I know I didn't really internalize this. The camera matters almost as much as, like, the way that you're moving Mario himself. Yeah. Because all the movement is relative to that camera. So if your camera is in just a weird position that you've never seen it before, more than likely your movement's going to suffer as a result. And you see strats, too, that specifically utilize that camera to make other things easier. Like, uh, you see Punkation using a strat for uh, alternate... Uh, mate, or no, it's Toxic Maze. Yeah, it's Toxic Maze. And it's it's just a, a simple C up strat that lets you just hold up on the control stick and do a clip through a wall. It, it's something that shouldn't be that easy, but with camera manipulation, it is. And likewise, yeah. If if you don't have your camera cooperating with you, then it just asks for everything else to go wrong too. Another very simple spot where your camera matters is cannonless. If you don't have the right camera, you can't hold down after doing a slow get up. Right, and you, you'll always see them do that camera flick. If you've ever wondered what that is, that's exactly what that is. They, they want to make sure that the camera is in a very distinct... So, so the camera operates in a kind of strange way in this game. It can do, like, a, a smooth panning, but it also has definite, like, 
this is one camera angle, and then you hit C right, this is another one. Yeah, and no, so it's by doing the relax cam when that happens. Right. And so by doing that quick right and left, you make absolutely certain that you're on one of those discrete positions instead of just being slightly off. Pair again nailing mips. Let's see how he goes through this door. Nice clip there, not quite instant, but I mean, we're not watching Aki. I, I wouldn't be yeah. expecting that yet. D would ever have a bit of an issue with that first door clip, though. Oh, he has to go through and restart. Oh, man, this is, this is a rough one for D. That camera right there, if you don't go a little more into the corridor, it won't turn around. And I think, was D going for that glitchy wall kick there? It, it looked kind of like he was. Yeah, he probably was. And that's, you're wall kicking off of Mips there, correct? Or are you actually wall kicking off the other side of the door somehow? I think you're wall kicking off the other side of the door and Mips is pushing you through. That that makes sense. Because you, uh, when when you do it, you want to land right in front of the door. And when you jump again, Mips push you through and you wall kick the wall. It's really weird, but it's really cool, too. And we see Para in that fire seat. Really nice uh, contrast between our two players right now. Yeah. D we has... Para... Oh, Para fails again. Para's just jumping. I, th I think he's just jumping a little bit too early because he's gotten that same exact bonk twice. Yeah. I could see that being a thing. It's really hard. It's either that or he's not jumping on the right frame. It must be it, I, I think. And again, gonna have to live through one empty cycle. Yeah, Let's see no, what... D's gonna go for it. Jumping again, on D... the right frame. Super consistent. And I mean, even though D took a considerable time loss, both this time on LBLJ and on uh, the MIPS clipping, it, it looks like Perry is gonna be holding onto the lead through Fire Seat, which yeah. big change from last race. Oh, D's gonna fall and miss the cycle. He was too high. When you do the double roll long jump, if you're too fast, then you will balk. Yeah, D whatever definitely going to be, I think at this point, looking for round three to make the the big difference. Yeah. But, so, I mean, we do still, of course, have 50 star door. That can be yeah. a pretty big time sink if your BLJs just aren't flowing properly. Yeah. If that's where, if that's the spot where D is going to catch up, I can definitely see it. And with the way the league works, even though it's three races, the first two races are really, really matter points wise. So if Para takes this, and then whoever gets the second, the third race is going to get massive points. But yeah, there's a lot of points where D can catch up, this being the first one. Let's see. Pear's got a couple of those doubles going, and... That's gonna as look long tough. As he doesn't lose it. Oh, he's not gonna clip through. That's it. He has to go back down. Usually you can tell after, like, seven long jumps or so, whether or not you can clip. Now, what Once makes the difference 10. there? Like, I, I've seen people, like, have to just do one at the door. I've seen people do three and still get oh, through. <laughs> D drops it! He dropped it! Oh no. D would have oh. had the lead. Oh Just man! Hit a from the right time. Wow, that is unfortunate. That that could have been just a huge upset for D in this race, but no such luck. Going through. Oh and D's having so much trouble getting up these stairs. Not happy about dropping that BLJ. See, at least if he's able to do this one better oh. than especially his first. Yeah. Eh. That's pretty good compared to his first one. About the only better thing he could have done would be be able to jang right into the hole. Meanwhile, yeah. Para. He's struggling quite a bit. Got shocked by an amp and he flubbed around on the elevators. Yeah, that, that elevator cycle can be kind of weird if you're having to hit it at an uncomfortable oh, area. And, and then missing that down. moving left side. And they're right next to each other all of a sudden. And D having the same issue with the elevators. The pair just has to miss one throw oh, and, and it- Oh, and get a dive! Both of these guys just 
falling all over the place at the moment. Gonna have to do that mental reset right before round three because at the moment, both of them not playing at levels that they both know they're capable of. But yeah. D with that and moving D right side, right again. swag it out. Para this comes down the grass. Yep. Para they're gonna enter right the about the same entry. time. Oh man, they are a star fade in apart. That's it. Let's see text boxes. Yup, <laughs> a text box apart too. Yeah. Well, let's see. It, it's going to be about the right. same time, spinning in different directions, and they. Oh he wow! And... <laughs> he misses and pair hits the first one. Incredible hit boxes. I incredible hit boxes. And he hits the second one on the edge of glory right now. Yup. Okay, two to one at the moment. And he if hits the Para last one. This... No, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Barely wow. missed. You got to if he's on like his last throw. No, wait, he's not. I wasn't paying attention. Wait, he is. Yep, he wins. He... <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's clenching this by by a text box or two. Yep. Barely finishing out that text before Para. He's taking this round to. This is really just... close. Man, he's what not as... Okay, I was going to say he's not as close as Para to the star. About a second apart. Wow, what a finish to this race! And that, that camera angle. It was when, when you said you thought that D wasn't on his third. I, I looked at. I was like, well, the the platforms look like they're falling, but it's yeah. His so camera much... didn't show it. His camera didn't show the platforms falling until he actually threw Bowser, and I saw the platform piece right in front of the bomb fall. But I mean, it's it's like. With, with how far apart this race was at times, I never would have expected it to come out like that. Yeah. So, D winning a lot of points. And game periods for bonus points, pretty much, for D. That was pretty crazy the ending, actually. <laughs> So both our players reading up going into this round three. I wonder what we're going to see from Para, knowing that no longer is winning or losing on the line. I wonder if he's just going to go all out trying to get that third point. Yeah. I didn't expect it in that way, honestly. <laughs> no, neither did I. I thought Para had it, especially after that fire seat. It, it looked like D whatever was just kind of falling apart, honestly. Yeah. So many weird things happened near the end. And it's been said so many times, so many different ways, not Merry Christmas, but speedrunning is such a mental game. And with something like what we were seeing from D whatever at the end, it's if you could see inside his head, it would literally just be, I made a mistake here. I'm focusing on it subconsciously just enough to suddenly just make more. And before you know it, you just got a mile of second, two second, 10 second time losses behind you. And you had no idea how it started. Yeah. Mario 64 is not a forgiving game at all. Not at all. Just watching the, the sheer number of times that, the, especially in longer categories, that these players will be doing, like, for instance, a dive that just barely clears a corner you're trying to get on top of, watching uh, basically pixel-perfect clips, or not pixel-perfect, but just so much in this game you don't see in very many other speed games, and if you do, it's nowhere near the level of optimized this is. Yeah since 96 i think we've even got runs of this game from back in like 2003 or something on vhs yeah, nice. which is just incredible when you remember this game doesn't have an in-game timer it's not one that really lent itself to being speed run like metroid for instance you have a clear time at the end of the game it, oh. it makes sense for that game to be speed run d whatever three for three <laughs> crawling <laughs> And Para goes right back in. Oh no. Oh, and D grabbed the door. Yeah, ma making a quick trip outside. Wanted to make sure that was still there after seeing the <laughs> endless void inside the castle. He had to make sure Lactie wasn't there. Yeah, had to make sure that even though he didn't welcome his boy in, that he oh, decided to D come in. D just cannot get those. Man. Para doing the box roll out again. Let's see if he gets a speak this time. He does. And makes it on. Just barely. And D grabs the door again. This is the map. Oh, oh and then Para dies! Jumping <laughs> off of the bridge! You get the speed kick and the box roll out, and then you do that. Good job. Yeah. 
and D still failing. D's not having it right now. He's like really extremely frustrated with LBLJ. Pair is giving him every opportunity to make up some of this time, and yeah, D's just, just losing more. D ledge grab there. That's oh D. What is happening? <laughs> This is effectively an exhibition of all the ways that you can fail LBLJ. Yeah, usually in a, a real stream of Tampa runs, this would have been reset three years ago. Oh, no doubt. At the first failure, just... <laughs> it's a me, Mario. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hello! For, for speedrunners, more like, Hello! Or whatever, whatever that sound is. That oh, D start. still hasn't got the dark road yet. <laughs> I think is he... he's effectively just not gonna. Com he wants to complete it, but he's he's just not happy. Yeah, he's, about he's, this. A, he's a full dark world behind at this point. Yeah. So okay, he's got the BLJ started. Oh, he drops it again. He does a oh, he does first person camera and loses all his speed. This is this is just rough. Just incredibly rough. <laughs> He's still Oh my god. I can't even watch anymore on it. This is so this is so sad to see. <laughs> you know, it, it's so <laughs> rare to see. Oh, and now he can't even get through that corner. <laughs> D posted in Discord someone patched LBOJ in his cartridge. <laughs> Somehow he ended up uh, getting the Shindu edition without realizing it. Yeah. In case you're not familiar, in Japan uh, chat, uh, towards the end of the N64's life cycle. Ooh, Para going for OG Cannonless Pair! <laughs> <laughs> what's good? He must know. He must know what's happening with you, whatever. Yeah, D's not going to complete it. He says his hand's not really having it. It's not I mean, going I, that well. I don't blame him. Like, And even though... The... Hmm. <laughs> Paris still doing OG. Not backing out on that. So kind of interesting... Out of Para's last two races, he has had his opponent forfeit both of them, <laughs> and yet he won one and lost one. <laughs> Here we go. So it's up to Para right now whether or not he wants to finish. Which, I mean, it, <laughs> after already having to do basically an exhibition uh, yesterday, I, I wouldn't blame him for not wanting to. D whatever just exploring the dark expanse beyond the castle. Alright, Paris says he's gonna finish. So I'll D BLJ's in the dark room by himself. Paris is he... gonna make his way through Womps. Looks like he's giving it one more one more go. Good old college try. Oh. Oh is this Yo! He's done it! <laughs> just just give it one more go, and he's he's finally through. Great. Let, let's see. Oh, he's doing no LBOJ. Okay, okay, he's just going to do Tsukishima. Just like casual Tsukishima. Putting on an exhibition himself. Wow. Okay, D, I think you're a little too much of a gamer. You're going to have to slow down. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> Oh, he missed but missing red. that red there, just ruining Tsukushima. At least he's <laughs> gonna do that movement to show you what it would look yeah. like. Beautiful movement. The Gimbo was not happy about missing that red. He was really angry. For a second, I actually thought he was going to do um, no reds movement. I did too. That would have just been... <laughs> what if he would have pulled out a zero yeah. star run on us? <laughs> just did zero star. Which I don't I think mean... he knows how to do it. I think he knows how to do one star, but not zero. 
and Which... paired to doing double plus. <laughs> you might have heard you earlier. It must have. It must be, I, I guess, skipping one of the uh, stars in LLL, maybe in HMC, but I don't know which one yeah. he'd skip. And I think next he's going to do Toxic Maze BLJ. <laughs> Okay, so we got Para coming out of SSL, a star up. Meanwhile, D whatever just submerged in Dark World for the moment. Para not getting a ground pound kill. Reacts pretty quickly though. Okay, and D might be a bit presumptuous, but I think he's finally made his way out of Dark World. <laughs> yeah. I think it is happening. I think he's on world record base. Zero, zero, zero. Dark World. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. Just starting yeah. your game and having it be there. He found the wrong world. The Mario 64 wrong world. To Dark World. Meanwhile, Pear having some issues with that first attempt on the log rolling star. Like, I, I would just call it triple jump wall kick. The problem, though, is that there's another one in this round. Yeah. There's so many tricks that have such simple names. And you right. don't always know what someone's talking about unless you're actually a runner of the game. Even something like Cannonless now, you have to specify if you're talking about the original Womp's Fortress or the JRB Cannonless strats that yeah. exist. You're pointing out something. Oh, I know what happened. So, for some reason, when you land, right as the boost ends, you'll get all your speed from the boost, and you'll just zoom up the slope. It's really weird. So Perry just just making quick work of Triple L. Yeah. He skipped the star. I don't, don't know what he skipped though. Uh, must have been Bully Talon or Big Bully, I think. He did Big Bully. I think he skipped oh, Talon. It, yeah, must have been Talon then. Kind of a weird choice because that one's quick for him at least with the left side strat. Yeah, but he's probably about to do Toxic Mace B O J. Probably having all the fun in the world. Mario Cam, let's see if he does though. Yep. It's Oh Yeah, he's going for it. Oh. A, a lot of bit too long since I've seen the star. Yeah. yeah, and and you have to hold that BLJ yeah. all the way oh. up. Oh he drops it right at the end. Oh no. So close. He was trying to be on the other side of that fence. That was it. Yeah. For, for those watching, but wow. And it, that's really the hardest part, is just keeping that BLJ all the way up the elevator, because if you drop it, you can't regain it. Yeah. And you have to have a very slight angle. Or you, if you have a too much of an angle and you BLJ, for some reason, you just go somewhere random in HMC. <laughs> D whatever making his way down to the basement now. Let's see if Para happens to give that strat another try. I think it'd be a great one just to see at least once. Yeah, he did it last the other day, or was it yesterday? Going for it again. I can tell he's going for it because he holds back after he does a triple jump and he goes to the side. Yep, setting up for that dive back in bounds. And, and he's there he is! Try. And so that's what happens. <laughs> 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 Gotta just swag out on us. Paracusia, the meme lord legend. This is beautiful.
So, uh, for our viewers, if it's been a while since you've seen that half A-Press video, um, you're welcome. I'm not in me or myself. I don't know about the half A-Press. Oh, the, the half A-Press video, it's on the watch for Rolling Rockstar, and it looks about the same with you just flying through HMC at one point and just hitting a star. The only thing I'll I really know about one. this game is Slider. <laughs> I know a little about penguins, but mostly just slider. And Para Para's showing off that grab. that that beautiful MIPS route. Yeah. And I'm sure a number of you, myself included, I I, I know it took me a good like five ten minutes every time I would try to grab MIPS in my casual playthroughs. And it's knowing that he does that right there every time in his route. You can put him in that corner, dive, grab him every single time. And even knowing that, if you try to go back and do it casually, it still won't work for you half the time. <laughs> I think the the bunny is a little oiled up. Must be. I mean, he's yeah. yellow. I'm I'm sure that there's some sort of grease that was applied to him. <laughs> coating. And it matches his fur. And you would think that after 20 some odd years that Nintendo would have figured out how exactly to program a bunny route, but nope, uh, in Odyssey any percent you grab a rabbit uh, almost immediately and it's the same thing. You just do a long jump over a very specific part of a rock and you'll always grab him every single time. He'll just run right into you. Nintendo can't stop the speedrunners. They just can't. They have a massive double jump. I, I don't get what it is with, with their game design. It's, they make these games that are just amazing casually, beautifully programmed, but then as soon as you start trying to speedrun them, you find all these little cracks throughout the code everywhere that you can use for yeah. all sorts of crazy stuff. Like, just look at OOT, for instance. I don't think anyone would have ever expected the 100% route to be, have been possible, especially back then. For sure. And the glitches that did exist. I, I, I mean, it's like... Nowadays, we think of Glitchy as like a Bethesda game, but like that's not what Nintendo games are at, are, are at all. They don't just break randomly. It's funny that the games are just barely designed for a lot of things to work. Right, I, I think it has a lot to do with, they, they must not have a very firm understanding of, hey, people are actually capable of doing things frame perfectly. <laughs> So I think that's where a lot of it comes from, is, is just like things that happen on the same frame that were never expected to happen on that same frame. Makes sense in my head, at least. Yeah, there's a lot of weird things where they probably... There's a chance that they did notice it. Oh, chat informing me that Galaxy is even worse. You just stand in a spot and the bunny will just run into you. Okay. <laughs> I think they should, just, they should just drop MIPS altogether. Or, you know, maybe having predefined paths isn't the best idea. Just, just <laughs> maybe. Oh, D going for the single star for that star, but he doesn't get it. It's a ledge grab. Yeah, that, that right there is like most of the tricks like what i was describing earlier where you do a dive and just barely clear <laughs> it's just fooling around just break dancing ground pounding all over the place this is this is a run to behold i think he's on world record pace pretty handy the meme route world record pace i'm i'm gonna actually die if he gets this first try he got a nope. whole um, okay. glitch. Yeah, I noticed that. That was... Yeah, like, when he didn't actually need it anymore. Uh, Para failing twice and now commentator no longer needs to become deceased. Hopefully not. Drogius are claiming that he predicted the OOT 100% route, big if true. He predicted slider too, so I can, I can imagine he predicted an entire route. In 2001, allegedly. Yeah. I, I, I can see it. It's possible. Yeah. 
Let's see how Para decides to pull out this Dark World. Does he know the moving right side? I'm sure he does. Yeah, he does. And he's yep, going for it. Let's see, it's... Oh, just barely not getting... Like, I think that was... He wasn't far enough to the right. Because he got the wall jump, but the, the platform above decided to t just tell him no. Yeah. Kind of sad he didn't go for a para. The moving right with an angle. D almost loses the mips in the door. It's really hard to lose mips when you do the, um, the glitchy door bonk. Yeah, but if it does happen, oh man, that's rough. Especially, um, there was a bingo race, I think it was, that I saw once where someone actually collected the MIP star and then that happened. Yeah. Because they, they needed, it made sense in bingo for them to collect the star, but then they lost the rabbit, or they may have taken a death in Fire Seer. Something weird happened and it was just like, well, great. Yeah. I think they, they had just to. just collect the star and the MIP never comes back. Right. I, I think they had to collect a good, like, three or four at least in order to get the 30 they needed in the first place. And Para has just joined the call after that stunning accomplishment of, of speedrunning. Para, how are you doing right now? Yeah, if you don't have a uh, an 18 uh, after that, then you should be embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta say, though, Toxic Maze, BLJ, that was on point. Oh, man. Yeah, and Pyramid Puzzle. It, it's actually really rare. Yeah, it, it's really rare for me to fail that Toxic Maze BLG. And just just all throughout this run, that that break dancing under that star was was just glorious. But I'm, and how how have you felt about your performance today? I mean, both races started off with a pretty decent lead, but then you know what, what was going on? What was going through your head? Uh, if I had to sum it up in one word, it'd be toxic. This is fair. Yeah. Oh, I just saw that grab, that Bowser grab. <laughs> <laughs> I was so close to dying. All right, so D join us. How are you feeling, D? You probably we, pretty we well. We have 30 seconds. Besides um, BLJs. I'm, no, BLJs. I'm really, I'm sorry about that last race, but I'm really happy about that first race. I haven't PB'd <laughs> in almost two years now. So hopefully that helped with my mental block or whatever. I always felt like I can't PB anymore, but finally did something. Yeah, my cat knocked something over for, for that first throw, and I thought I missed, so I looked away, but it, it hit on like the last pixel. So, <laughs> and that, that's what lost me the race. Yeah, and I sure think at nice. least two or three times, both of you threw a bomb, it, or threw Bowser, it looked to be about the same distance away from the bomb. One of you exploded the bomb, the other didn't. It was like, it, it was definitely a showcase of just how incredible the hitboxes are on those bombs. Yeah, and before we go, I have like one more question for Pear. Did after the first race, did you decide that you were done playing for consistency, and you just want to go? Yeah, I'm like, no, I can't, I can't mess around with D. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, we're done, we're done. I'm coming to the next race. <laughs> well, yeah, so uh, you, stick everyone. around. We got yeah, stick around. That's we got another 16 star race, Benji versus Anti coming up. Don't want to miss that. And like I've yeah. said earlier, my name is Electric here with my co-host Tama. Been a pleasure. GG's. GG's.